Hello, hello, hello. Anybody there? Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Around a second. Hmm. So I got a couple things in mind we could do tonight. Um, there's always something I haven't laid out. Well, let's just get started here. Um, anyone who doesn't know, I am David. I run the FX Layout Store blog, Instagram, this YouTube thing occasionally when I oh feel like making a video, <clears throat> um, and probably doing less frequent posting on Facebook. But anyway. Um, there's good old Eagle 9.6.2. Um, and I think tonight I'm going to be laying out this guy. My friend Chris <clears throat> has been wanting the Electroharmonics Pulsar, not the old transistor based one, but the newer one. Um, it has like a, a CA3080, I think, and a bunch of quad amp amps. Um, one doing the LFO, one doing the audio path. So that's what this is. It's really small, and I'm going to have to really zoom it in to see it myself on my big monitors. But he had um, bought one for his personal collection and sent me a ton of picks to um, to trace it because it's a single sided through hole board it's easy to um, easy to trace from pictures fairly easy anyway um, and I was able to confirm that the schematic that is floating out there is correct um, yeah this <clears throat> so that's what I'm going to be drawing up tonight. I don't know if I'm going to get all the way through to a finished board. We shall see. Um, but uh, it would be nice to at least make some progress on this and get this fabbed in the next couple of weeks. Because um, I have a bunch of boards I need to go get fabbed before, um, before Chinese New Year hits and China shuts down. Um, yeah. So, let's go over here to Eagle. <clears throat> if you've watched my Eagle tutorial on this channel, you have uh, probably seen how this works. But for those who may not have, uh, we start with the little libraries. And the built-in libraries are fine, but I don't love them. Um, it's easier to use something that's specifically for pedal building um, and this one so new schematic all right and let's pull up the factory schematic which I think is what this is oops there we go um, all right we have just a bunch of resistors. Um, so let's start there. 
go with standard quarter watt. Um, I'm just going to basically copy this thing because I know it's accurate because I traced the dumb thing. Let's Grab line caps. Of course, cap size depends on the value of the capacitor, and this is just a little, I think that says 22N. Uh, so that should be pretty easy for a standard little guy. That's a big one. So do that. All right. Um. Yeah. Time for some some pins. Let's connect jazz up. Space. Right. Now we need an op amp. Seems flawed through hole. All right. <clears throat> this is always subject to change. Which which pins I'm going to use? That kind of is dependent on the layout and how everything is fitting together. Folks are quiet tonight. Since this thing uses an old CA3080, those things are not the easiest to get your hands on anymore. But it's the same as a um, 13700, which is just two of them, two of the 3080s in one package. So we can just use one half of it. I don't think so. Get the CA3080. DigiKey says they have them. I 
almost four bucks a chip. Sign of the times. Um, I'm sure that's reputable, and I don't know how much longer these guys are going to be around. Seven bucks. Oof. Um, yeah, we'll probably swap it with a 13700. Uh, that makes more sense, I think. Yeah, we'll just use that. <clears throat> Question is, do I have that in my library? And I don't think I do. Crap. <laughs> I have a 3080. That doesn't help us very much. So we need. Oh, I thought I had one. Um, let's see if it's in an old library of mine that I didn't release. Kind of doubt it though. Mad Bean probably has it. Maybe not. Huh. Oh, wait, an RTA. Do I have it in RTAs? I do. Driver just copied from Mad Bean. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Appreciate you, buddy. Um. Woohoo, okay. <clears throat> so that's not in the exact same footprint in the schematic, but that's okay. The question is what connects to what? <clears throat> To Google. Oh, hey, I made a. <laughs> Let me plug the blog here for a second, and uh, here's one of my old layouts. Okay. That's fairly straightforward. <clears throat> And we're only using one half, so. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and. Show. Okay, so it goes into. Oh, this goes into pin two, which I would assume is pin four. Where he says. Two. Back on track. And this, I think seven and five are connected. Right, internally, anyway. That would make sense. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay, there we go. Oh, I think that's right. Okay. So, move some of this out of the way. Okay, we need some more 
What is these throws? Now with two connects to me. No, I think that's bad. I guess we could rename. Yes, change this to seven hundred. Then and the rabbit. Just think, oh, okay, OTA is the new one. Whatever. Um, I'm just rearranging this a little bit. Connections aren't being modified or anything. Let's make a lick in there still. Okay. Not the prettiest, but. We'll make it look better later. Three and th three are they the same? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And these both are going to voltage reference. Okay. Oh no, it don't connect to anything. Oh no, it connects to pin five. Um, uh huh. Okay. Another resistor. And that goes down to the LFO. Here. Okay, so V plus I assume is going to connect itself to voltage because it's not a numbered pin. Can I even put anything on there? It doesn't connect. So I think that's saying internally that connects to voltage, which would be that's the hot pin there. Seven on the thirty eighty and that one here. Eleven. <clears throat> Okay, well, we'll figure that bridge out when we figure that bridge out. Cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, six and eight this on. Two, four, five, six, these two, and four, seven, eight. Oh, I'm 
don't even need seven and eight. Seven and eight. Okay, that's the output then. Uh, right, that makes sense. So we don't really need this transistor buffer. I guess that would just be. Is that not? That must not be in the original TDD. Seem like a good idea to add it without knowing does that see what that's gonna do? Um, or if it's not gonna hinder the effect. Of course that is a buffer there. And yeah, we'll keep it simple. Um This is going to be I one. Hey Matt S, I'm glad the Eagle tutorials helped. Uh, you're more than welcome. They were fun to do, and um, yeah, I'm glad people are getting some use out of them. And hey Alexander from Brazil, cheers my friend. Happy New Year. Uh, thanks for the kind words. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions while well, I'm just kind of talking to myself and laying this thing out, feel free to fire away. Um, do not ask me to debug your pedal build. <laughs> this is not the not the medium for that, and I'm bad at debugging my own build sometimes, so I don't know if you want me to do that, if you want me doing that in the first place. Um, Alejandro, thanks, man. Appreciate it. I don't know if we're the best, but I try to do something that people like, and you guys seem to. So, cool. Did you guys get anything cool for Christmas? <laughs> I'll go first. I got a couple very cool couch guitar straps. They're my absolute favorite. <clears throat> oh, uh, Alexander, we're doing this is the um, newer Electro Harmonics Pulsar Tremolo. Uh, it uses a couple op amps and um, an old CA3080. Um, a friend of mine. Um, bought one and took a bunch of pictures of the board and it's single-sided and all through whole stuff so I was able to trace it and verify that the schematic that's out there um, online is actually legit and is the new sensor EHX I don't know if it's the factory scan or what but it is legit and so yeah I traced the whole thing and just made sure that it that this was correct to what I was seeing on uh, in the pictures on the <clears throat> it's the big box like a big like the big big muff. Um, do I have better do I have the full picture of the pedal? I don't know if he sent me the full picture of the pedal, but full size pots, big big twenty four millimeter dudes. Um, oh, I'm kind of blocking it, aren't I? Is that better? There we go. You have you got a bag of four pounds of NOS Mojo caps. Nice. That's always fun. Are there any other Eagle libraries worth looking at besides yours and Mad Bean? Um, for little things, I don't know if if it's worth it for uh like a full library to pull from as you are working, like like mine or Beans. Um. <clears throat> 
there like I have well, there you go um, this is my kind of library stuff that I uh, I use these two not so much anymore they're just old and I haven't deleted them um, <clears throat> that's what I used in the um, the tutorial series and then mad beans is always good and what mine is like 90% based off of um, this MTM parts library is good for there's a lot of like um, modular synth rack stuff um, that I use every once in a while for stuff um, it's not I mean that's I'm not gonna tell you don't go get a library get libraries and use what um, what is useful for sure um, just get what you need and then you can modify it as you needed this is some spark fun thing that I probably needed like one thing out of and just left it and then I have random parts from different projects of various needs I think that was an Arduino um, ground spring if you're using un like board mounted uh, jacks that don't have metal sleeves um, yeah I read mojo cap oh I forgot I made that Huh. Anyway, um, a Russian JFET from some random project. Um, I, none off the top of my head other than these two, the MTM and the SparkFun. Um, but a lot of times you can just Google what um, you know, find a parts library for random things, and a lot and a lot of times places like Mauser or DigiKey will have. Um, what are they? The um, They'll have a footprint for whatever um, part you're looking at, at least in something that you can download and then convert into Eagle or other um, other design programs. Um, I haven't done that a ton, but I've done it a little bit here and there for random things, um, mostly for um, like commission work. Um, if someone's like, hey, I use this part. I'm like okay I'll look it up on Mauser and most of the time they have they have the part I'm looking for this goes somewhere where does this go okay Yeah, I'm a big EHX fan, fan as well, Alexander. I, um, I mean, who doesn't love the Big Muff? Um, <laughs> um, but they do some cool stuff. It's it's always like, um, you're welcome, Craig. Um, it's always, uh, you know, well, it used to be at least back in the day, all the cheap parts and whatever Mike could get his hands on for cheap, and that's why there's so many different iterations of the of the big muffin stuff, but I don't know, there's something about that that's always fun. Um, and like the, um, I call it the Corsair. I think it's called the Freedom. It just, it's a new, a new board in the last drop. Um, it's a preamp from the Freedom. It was like a battery powered amp that they had back in the seventies or something. I think they were trying to compete with like pig nose. Um, and I heard, um, I was on the JHS YouTube channel, and he demoed like a bunch of solid state amps that most people wouldn't give a second thought to. And uh, and he played the Freedom Amp, and he cranked it, and it sounded really cool. And I thought, oh, that'd be a cool overdrive or preamp type of thing. And sure enough, it sounded cool. And then I found out like a couple weeks later that um, EHX had had the same thought and had put it out as a in pedal form as well back in the day in the big bent uh, aluminum closures like you know the big muff and everything um, so it wasn't an original idea to me few things are everything is a remix in some way
Ooh, okay. All right, the audio bath is almost done. Uh, oh, 2.2 US. Um, I go. I usually don't put in values of stuff till I probably said this in the tutorial, but I don't do it until I am finished. Usually laying everything out or drawing up the schematic, so then I can easily copy and paste um, parts without having to edit the well I'm gonna to have to edit it one way or another and that's why I don't remember um, or I don't forget to modify a value so we'd have hopefully fewer typos um, in build docs and just making a circuit correct <laughs> um, every single EHX pedal is a surprise yes <laughs> Good luck with the uh, with the bad stone. Yeah, they're all they're all a little a little weird in their own they have their own little quirks for sure. I don't have any vintage, at least a vintage American. I have a couple black uh, box big muffs from the Soviet years or the Russian years, post Soviet, <clears throat> which are pretty cool. Um, and they have their own quirks. Um, Man, some of those old Russian uh, um, Russian caps are are super funny. They just look like two leads that they wrapped in like red electrical tape and somehow work. <laughs> they look super fragile. I'm always weird, uh, leery of poking around inside one of those things. Too much anyway. Uh, what am I doing? Supply pin. Out. Nice. Now I keep toying with the idea on this because Chris, the guy who sent me the shots of all the of the pedal, all the guts, said that the speed, uh, I think it was the speed, was a little, or I guess the rate, the rate pot. Um, the sweep was weird and it's only a 1k linear pot so it may just be like a C or, or an A taper pot might change that um, and make it a little bit more usable it's kind of hard to do a mod when you don't have don't have the unit right in front of you but I'm just going to do it stock to start out with, and then if we need to make modifications, we can. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm just going to make it stock for now. And then if we need to down the road, we can always do a second version. Um, hope I'm not giving you guys whiplash when I zoom in and out on the schematic. Um, apologies if I do. <laughs> Just hang on tight. Okay, so that's the audio path. And then the tremolo signal comes in here on that resistor into the OTA, which then gets mixed. I betcha I don't need this, and I could do the do the. Oh, that's a Darlington instead of an off amp off amp. It's going to be a little cleaner buffer. Huh. What do you guys think? Should I screw with something we know works? <laughs> Probably not. I think I'd have to just add one resistor.
probably also have to terminate these somehow, and I am not sure how. Like on an op amp, if you have unused ones, you join the negative and the output together, and the positive, I think you run to either ground or voltage reference. But I don't know what you do with an OTA. Oh yeah, it's the chair. This chair is old. <laughs> Thanks for calling me out, Alexander. <laughs> Yeah, and if you hear any thuds, it's just, I'm in my basement. Somebody's walking around upstairs. <laughs> my kid's probably out of bed. <clears throat> just, okay, let's just cross that bridge later. Okay, figure this nonsense out. This is a really big LFO. This is power over here. I don't think I can see it all. Um, because my head's in the way. So this is power here. It does use a nine volt regulator, which is interesting. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Alexander. Um, it does use a nine volt regulator, which is interesting since it's running off of straight nine volt power. Not something we see super frequently. Um. We might simplify that and just use our standard. Um, cause where's polarity protection on this thing? Does it have it? Yeah, because the battery comes in over here. Interesting. So that's ground. This is a weird way to go on this, I guess. I don't know. That's not even marked as. Oh, yeah, it is ground. Okay. Um, yeah, see, this kind of. If I ever draw something like this, somebody call me on it because this is. There's literally two, three, four. Yeah, it might be super sensitive to voltage spikes. That's a fair point. <clears throat> Yeah, that might be the case more with the old CA3080, but even classic effects like the Dynacomp and those and Ross compressor and stuff, they didn't use a regulator, although maybe they should have, and that's why EHX did it. I don't know. Um, yeah, that's, I think that's what this is. This is a, the factory schematic from 2004. From new sensor. Um, yeah. Um, uh, like I said, let's just do it stock. And yeah, they are really hard to read. Yeah, like I was saying, there's there's like four points where there's marked ground on them. My schematics are there's like so many ground ground markings. Um, yeah, we already have two and. That's the only two things that have gone to ground so far and they each have their own. Um, all right, power is usually the last thing I drop anyway. So we'll do, I guess we'll start with the LFO, which is, well, that's the only thing that's left that's massive. It alone uses a quad amp. Okay. Okay, stop stalling. Just do it. Okay. I'll zoom in a little bit and see if I can make out more of this. Okay. Okay. Resistors. Oh, I put that right so close. Should be not over. So 
that's ground there. Okay. Okay, so this is just a voltage reference buffer. Because this is 9 volt ish here. That splits it. That buffers it. So this is the 247s to ground and voltage is odd. Maybe it's doing more than that. No, it's the same voltage. I swear. Weird. Anyway. It's fine. Big caps. Yeah, this is really more of the power section than it is the <laughs> than it is the LFO. It's just the LFO's power section. So we'll come back to this. So I don't feel like doing this right now. Back. Um Let's just scoot this over. I guess we start at the depth pot, that makes sense. That's gonna be a 16 millimeter. I can't remember if the circle means pin three or pin one. I think it means pin three. Here's the trace I did of it. I drew it up in DIY LC. Yes, depth pin. Wait a minute. Yes, because the caps are on, or the pots are on the same side as all the components. So that is pin one. Yeah, okay. We're going to hang on to that for future reference. So that is pin three. Oops. Part numbers are not going to match the original at all. Which is, I don't care. That's fine. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Dude, I've done this. I've done so many schematics now that it's it's just practice. It's really all it is. Practice just makes you better. Doesn't make you perfect. Does make you better though.
Yeah, the schematic doesn't help making it any easier though, because of all these. Like this is a voltage reference just for the LFO. It's going everywhere. Why they didn't just? Well, because I guess they market it at voltage. I don't know. I'm sure there was a reason back in 2004 when they drew this up. Um, what were you doing in 2004? I was a freshman in college, first year of college. Ugh, I don't want to think about that. <laughs> Way a long time ago now. Okay, that's the right indicator. Oh, they connect a voltage on the switch. Well, I should ask Chris. Why is Chris not on here? I'm going to text him. <laughs> Does the switch make a major thunk when you hit it? It's just a usual DPDT. Lost schematics for part numbers were laid out back to front. Yeah, there's, I think actually EHX used to do back to front with the Big Muff because, uh, was it Kit Ray? Um, all his Big Muff um, schematics are, uh, are back to front like that from output to input because that's how I guess they originally were. What's up, Pedro? Happy New Year. Uh, yeah, Japanese is red left to right, or right to left. Yeah, that would make sense too. I don't know. Um, oh, okay. Where were we? LFO. That's not going to work with my normal foot switchboard, which kind of stuff sucks. Wait, I don't know what to put that there. I'm going to throw on some tunes that hopefully don't get like copyright crap on them. Let me know if you guys can hear that. <laughs> I haven't streamed in a long time. And if they're too loud. Okay, so that goes to the voltage for that. 
which we'll call VC. It's a little close up there. So let's move everything. All right, the original had these three uh, 100 nanofarad caps in parallel. Um, oh, cool, Alexander. Yeah, I appreciate that. It's always welcome. Um, see, these three caps basically make a 300 nanofarad cap. And I'm wondering why they just did three and didn't use it like a 330. <sighs> Do I plan to restock the EQD life pedal? Maybe. I don't know. I I like that pedal a lot. I'm wondering if I should do a simplified. Um, this was actually another idea from somebody else. Uh, to put the, to just make a smaller version that fits in like a 125B. Um, is that Chris? What's up, dude? Um, yeah, if I do if I do another one, I may just remove the boost so people can do whatever boost they want after it, um, and just have the rat and the octave on their own switches so it will fit in a a one twenty five B. Um, but I don't know. I might do both. Um, so yeah, stand by. We'll see. <laughs> um, it is a very cool um, rat variation that people do seem to really dig. Um, You bet, man. This was this is always a fun, a fun project. It's fun to dabble doing some streaming. Um, create some uh, content while I do what I was gonna do anyway. Um, oh, Chris, since you're here, do you notice with the original, um, if there's any bigger kathunk than usual with the three PD? 3 pdt foot switch because the um not direct nine volt voltage but voltage from the lfo connects directly to the foot switch am i hiding this it's right here by my head right there um i wondered since it was connected to voltage if it made any extra thunk more thunk than usual
I don't know if it actually would make an extra hunk. I just, whenever I see people tying butch switch to voltage, direct voltage like that instead of ground, which you couldn't do it any other way with this schematic, but I always, uh, I always wonder if it's louder. It is not a opto. It, it uses the, yeah, I'm super zoomed in. Um, I'll just make that larger. Um, it's hard, very hard to read because um, it is pretty low res. Um, but it uses a um, an old CA3080 um, OTA chip. And we're going to make it work with an LM13700 uh, because uh, it's going to be harder to find the 3080s anymore since um, small bears closing down and chips from China are uh, eh, sometimes kind of sketch. Um, I did see the DigiKey. I think it was D DigiKey has, um, has some CA3080s, but I Google that again. Yeah, DigiKey has this, which I don't know. Extendedly done. Do I have any in stock? 78. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's probably better to just stick with the 13700. But yeah, it's an interesting design. That's why I wanted to give it a go. Um, pretty chunky LFO. Bartola Minifuzz. Did I say that right? <laughs> Bass Fuzz is uh, it's a fun little circuit. You can do a lot of different weird things with it. The only viable options. Yeah, I understand that sometimes. Um, well, lately, too. Sometimes that's the same here. Um, yeah, I am looking forward to building one of these myself. Oh, good. My college Spanish. <laughs> I know you're speaking Portuguese, but <laughs> it's close. It wasn't all for naught. <laughs> Actually went to college with a, a, a guy who grew up in Brazil, so he, he uh, maybe some of that rubbed off on me. <laughs> Okay, mode switch. Oh yeah, funny thing about this. Um, in the in the original, I think this is just classic EHX. Um, use what we have on hand. They use a DPDT toggle, and really only need to use. It's only being half of only half of it's being used, um, right there, for triangle or square wave. Um, so we're definitely going to be making that in SPDT. Um, do I still do many perf board builds? Every once in a blue moon, I'll throw something together on perf, but not super frequently because um, most of my building is for verifying the designs that end up on the store. Or for personal stuff, for like my personal pedal board, I've been playing um, playing guitar a lot more recently and not just for testing fuzz pedals, which is a nice change of pace. Um, and so I'll be like, oh, I wish I had this. And so I'll make something. Sometimes it ends up on the store, sometimes it doesn't. But you get spoiled on a fabricated board. Why am I in supply pins? I need switches. Um, but yeah, I was looking at something the other day. I'm trying to remember which circuit it was. I was like, ah, oh, I could build that on perf. 
if I could find my perf board. I moved about a year ago, and all my stuff are still in boxes. <laughs> yeah, we mentioned that uh, a little while ago, Chris, um, the pot taper changes. Um, you were talking mostly with the rate pot, right? The speed. Um, that's something we'll have to play around with when we get into the prototype stage. Slope, I feel like, is fine on with a linear. This is just going between the diodes and resistors here. That's probably fine. Depth is probably a matter of taste between logarithmic or linear. Rate and depth. Okay, so that might be... That might be another... Yeah, we'll play around with that for sure. Or you will if you're the one going to be verifying this, Chris. <laughs> um, yeah, if a pot value doesn't, or a taper doesn't fix the, at least the rate one. It's such, it's only a 1K. It's, uh, maybe even, I'm picking that for like 2K might be better. I don't know. Can you guys hear the music, by the way? I don't know if it, if my, if OBS is set up to, grab that. It's showing, but I don't know if it's actually playing. And this is a really crazy jam. A large build for this door? What do you mean, like a big form factor one that would fit in a giant bent steel enclosure? Or are you just talking about putting this one on the store? <laughs> the graphic fuzz is that the one that's got like separate EQ oh yeah that could be pretty pretty crazy Speaking of hard to read schematics. <laughs> yeah, hope you can read it. It wasn't very big. No kidding. That would be killer. Oh, it's bipolar too. It runs off 12. Oh, a CA-94. I haven't even heard of that one. I think. Oh, this one is from FSB. <laughs> At least this one's going to be blown up. This isn't terrible. 
Uh, how many op amps? Uh, one, two, three. So that's probably a quad right there. That's one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's three quad op amps plus some um, JFETs and BJTs. And uh, whatever the CA3094 is. It's a bit of a doozy. <laughs> anyway. We'll worry about that one in the future. I guess I did one. <laughs> no comments. It's a one UF film cap. That's going to this be right thing. Yeah, shoot me some max for those if you've got them. I wanted to do more scratty stuff, but haven't. Um, just haven't. <laughs> haven't had the the enough urge to do so, I guess. Chris, did you build that um, the Corsair, the Freedom preamp yet?
<laughs> Those of you who might not know, Chris makes some very cool Marvel themed uh, enclosures. Are you getting those UV printed, dude? Isn't that what you said? And like, really, who doesn't want a Captain America pedal on their board? Rotate, rotate. Cool, I got you with that. I've been meaning to try that out with um, <clears throat> what Tate is, Tate is offering on that. But the um, only reason I haven't is because um, mostly time. I've been really happy with the um, Mod Podge um, methods I've been using that um, actually I'm pretty sure it was a uh, CJ uh, culture jam on Mad Bean, Mad Beans forum that first posted about using Mod Podge on an enclosure. Um, Funnily enough, my sister, a bunch of, oh, probably uh, when I first got into pedal building, so close to a decade ago now, uh, Maj podged a bunch of old Spider-Man comic pages onto a pedal for me, um, and it was cool, but I never thought of doing that for like printed out graphics and stuff. Um, I'm not sh convinced the, uh, yeah, he was using regular paper. I, yeah, I use a slightly heavier paper, but I've, I've done it with cheaper paper too. And it's been fine. Here's, uh, where's that button? If you can see that this is my second C. It's held up all right on my board. I took it off for, to fit a tremolo on there. Hilariously. There is one chunk. It got dinged um, probably from a cord sitting on top of it and the lid of my pedal board case closing on it. And I can't remember if I clear coated this one or not, but it started to wrinkle a little bit, but it kind of looks cool. I don't know if it will pick up in the webcam. Probably not, but it's fairly smooth. I don't think I wet sanded this one. So other ones have been even more smooth. It's definitely cheaper <laughs> than getting stuff done. Dude, don't spoil future uh, <laughs> future streams. I'll probably lay that one out on stream sometime soon. I'll probably make it so you could use either one. Like, uh, was it Mad Beans? That means what pork pork barrel is that his CE2 clone? He has the jumpers so you can do either the 3207 or the the 3007. Still trying to figure out some cool way to finish my enclosures. I live in a small flat, not so many options. Polishing the enclosures and trying to figure out a way to stamp on it. Yeah, that's hard. Um Yeah, I think I did a video on my Instagram a while ago on how I did the Mod Podge thing, which is a pretty good option because you just you can just use a small brush um, and brush it on. Um, yeah, it's there's a lot of different ways. I oh one way if you're etching circuit boards uh, yourself. 
you can always, um, instead of etching an enclosure, uh, I did some, I basically just did the toner transfer onto the aluminum. I think I even did it onto a powder coated one, which had mixed results. Sometimes it worked. Sometimes the powder coat wasn't as strong. Um, um, but that worked. I printed it out, you know, inverted, and then ironed it on. Um, it looked pretty cool. Um, so that's worth a shot if you just want, you know, basic labeling and. All right, where am I? What is this? Let's be rough, okay. <laughs> I think that's uh, a lot of people's problem. Too many pe too many circuit boards and not enough time. Over some more. Yeah, let me double check if I actually did put that up on Instagram. Pretty sure I did. Allow me to check real quick. If I didn't do a tutorial, I've definitely explained it half a dozen times in comments. <laughs> um, it's in here somewhere. Oh, yeah, I think I did. Yeah, it's a post from May 13th. Looks like this. Yeah. Or I suppose I can pull it up on that still work. It's down here somewhere. Yeah, this one. <clears throat> yeah, no problem. Man. Oops, wrong button. This button. Yeah, you just print out your graphics that you want and uh, use the Mod Podge to glue it to the enclosure. And then use the Mod Podge as kind of like a clear coat over top to protect it. And then. Um, <laughs> this picture is taken at a very specific angle so you can't see all the brush strokes <laughs> but um, if you don't mind brush strokes uh, it's not too bad yeah oops come back okay Goes to VRF too. Okay. Oops, I already screwed up.
Yeah, that looks right. Alright, I think that's the LFO. Unless I'm missing something. That schematic is so liney. <clears throat> right now, of course, I'm just making it um, just, uh, just as the original, and then I can come back and modify it after I think on it. Um, so I'm probably not going to get to the layout tonight, but I'm definitely, I'm just getting the schematic up and then, um, which I know is more of the boring part to view. So thanks for hanging in there, you guys. Um, the only changes I'm thinking of are having the LED constantly on. Um, Cause the way they have it with the foot switch connecting to, um, power <clears throat> I won't work with my breakout boards um, these guys um, for foot switch because it just automatically switches it to ground so it may just leave that on uh, I have the rate uh, indicator always on and then another LED for um, on or off The other option would be to just go kind of crazy and have a <clears throat> a second foot switch that's well, that could be fun. A second foot switch that triggers a different rate pot, so you could have kind of like kind of like in um, Earthquakers Palisades, where you have two different gain knobs and it's on a switch, a foot switch to go between the two. Um, It'd be the same kind of idea, just with different speed controls. That could be cool. Then have a separate breakout board, and but we'll probably just keep it simple to start with, and then we can do a modified crazy, crazy version down the road if we if we feel like it. Yeah, like it's full tone trim, exactly. I forget about them. Okay, power. Power is stupid <laughs> and complicated. We have all these. Oh, that's the other thing I got to figure out. How do you terminate unused OTAs? It's probably best not to just leave them um, just hanging out. But I don't know. This nine volt regulator is it's not bugging me, but I'm just really wondering how necessary it is. Because usually I just throw in a shot key and then a, if we needed a resistor, which we'll probably throw in because I've got 47 ohm resistors for power filtering, 
filtering. And I think that's what I'm gonna try for now. So I think if it was super necessary, it would be uh, af down the line from the battery, and the battery comes in after that, which is, I don't know. I don't know, were wall warts back in the early 2000s really terrible? The AS3080. Ah, oh, Electric Druid has those. New production OTA clone. Hmm. Maybe we'll, we'll maybe we will stick with a, a 3080 if these can be oh new production and see what the OISP says yeah it looks like the I mean, normally the first couple letters, whatever, in an op amp or a chip or whatever, <clears throat> or just manufacturer. Um, e apparently stands for extended, according to this post by Electric Druid on DIYSB. Um, but yeah, it seems like it's just a straight clone of the 3080, but they added, um, they've added linearization diodes of the LM1370 or 700. Um, which were just they just used the unused pins on the original 3080. All right, maybe we should just switch back to the 3080 then. Yeah, because otherwise you you are wasting half of a whole half of a chip, which is annoying. See what's cheaper, an LM thirteen seven hundred or no? Don't go to just go to regular Mauser <laughs> wagon. Uh, let's see if they have a thirty eighty. Have an LM thirteen seven hundred. Okay, thirteen seven hundred is a little cheaper. Two sixty seven on Mauser for one. Thirty eighty would take up a heck of a lot less space than the what is it, sixteen pin? Yeah, sixteen pin thirteen seven hundred. Something to think about. Bunch of tantalum caps you probably don't need. What all of this needs to come up here. I'm not gonna have space for all of this. So 
weirdly not a ton of capacitors in the actual audio pack. Unless I'm missing something. Okay, cool. If you guys think they're easier enough, easier to find. Last time I tried a, <laughs> tried 3080s was a while ago, and I definitely got some bad knockoffs on, from China. <laughs> right no. one's not used seven goes to power okay Yeah, you never know. It's the fun thing of out of date, obsolete parts or whatever. You never know what you're going to get. Oh, those are cool. Definitely paying more for the mojo. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't screw this up.
so this is VR. <laughs> the bigger the logo, the faker they are, I guess. Hey man, welcome to the stream. Yeah, I guess we have been doing this for a while. Argentina, cool. Hola. That's about most of my Spanish. <laughs> that is the big problem in the United States is we are bad about learning another language. But thank goodness for Google Translate. Interesting that they do these extra caps here. Get out of here. Normally you would put it filter cap here for voltage reference when you're buffering it with an op amp. Interesting. We'll do it like it was originally. Oh, thanks, Guido. That, uh, the way, that's the, the goal, anyway. Sometimes it works. Sometimes they're not as tidy, but part of that's the, uh, just the way the circuit is. Sometimes you can't get them as nice as you'd like, but. If you're wondering what we're doing here, this is the um, Electroharmonics Pulsar, the newer one um, that uses an OTA chip, um, not the older, I think it was all transistor based one. <clears throat> but we're just getting to the power section on this big guy. This uses, I think, three chips total. Ah, oh, thick traces, yes. Uh, most of that is because I suck at transferring toner. <laughs> so when I was doing them myself, I, uh, yeah, I'll do a, um, I'll do a single-sided etchable and hopefully perfable, perfable, is that a word? Perf layout as well, um, for the, of the stock version. The version that ends up on the store might be tweaked and modded and have some fun jazz that uh, the original didn't because you can get an original for not too expensive I think <laughs> this is weird but whatever Okay, and then we have another 47. Uh -huh. <clears throat> hmm. 
Yeah, I got you. That makes sense. Yeah, I was uh, I I'm I haven't etched a board in a while myself, but um, um, I used I was tired of spending so much time etching the copper off because it was bare and you know if there was any voids. Yeah, it makes it faster for sure. That's why I did it. I'm still not great at transferring the toner. Super great. And better than when I first started, uh, but it's been probably a year and a half since I actually fabricated my own board. Uh, but it might change this year. I don't know. Hey, Elad or Elad, 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 Gear Ant guy. <laughs> Sorry for butchering it. Um, oh, my LPB one for first build. It works anyway. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it's it's always a progression, man. You're always getting better. You're always better than you were yesterday. Oh, crap. What'd you miss? You missed uh, just trying to read a really uh, small res uh, EHX schematic. This is the, um, the newer Pulsar tremolo um, that... EHX put out in the early aughts, 2004 is the date on this schematic. Um, Chris, um, the Winter Soldier guy on Instagram and Mad Bean forum, um, he took sent or took a bunch of his original and took a bunch of pictures, and I was able to trace it from the pictures. Excuse me, and verify that this schematic that's been floating around online uh, is indeed accurate. So now we're laying it out and uh, um, probably make an etchable slash perf layout for the blog eventually and then a um, possibly a modded version for the store I don't know time will tell first PCB I did was like an Indian tutorial on how to make a piezo amp and somehow work and then that made me keep going <laughs> Uh, that's funny. Am I gonna run it on a simulator once I'm done? Like uh, Spice, that's built in. No, because I don't know how to use it. <laughs> um, I have never really played with that, and I should figure that out one of these days. But no, since this is a known, that's just a clone, basically. If it were something new, I might try it. I need to come up with something new that I can figure that out on because I've seen people do stuff in LT Spice for ages and it always seems like um, wizardry <laughs> I have not been able to figure out how are your um Yeah, same. Uh, how are your, what are they, Hornets? Super Hornet, what did you call them? The, uh, your drive, your dual drive pedal that's coming out. How is all that going? Are you tired of populating the same 20 resistors? <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> over and over? uses oops on button yellow jacket sorry 43 resistors
Yeah, if you guys have not seen Gear Ant's upcoming release of the Yellow Jacket, go check out his Instagram. Filtering. We are SVB, SVB. Oh no. I have built one up and it has sat in my, <laughs> it sat in my box of things to test i haven't even tested it wired bots up it's all popular i mean you know me i hate offboard wiring even if it's just three pots i so it's uh, i have an enclosure ready for it and um i have not given a go i will say though the i don't think it's not in the um store anymore but it's the it was i need to do a new version of it um the echo knot um it was inspired by kind of based on the king dubby has a different um uh way of controlling the time with the dual gang pot instead of the transistors and stuff um and it worked fine so i don't know what to tell you sorry um so that last stage on the op amp i just read up on this day it was not yeah, yeah, you got to ground them or put them. These are being used as um, buffers, actually, for uh, the voltage references. This one has two. Um, this is a weird way of doing power filtering. Normally, you do the voltage split, two resistors, and then you put a capacitor between that one and ground. But they do it this way, and so I'm just doing it to be somewhat accurate. Yes, the whole world should. Uh, anybody who just loves offboard wiring is all kinds of a something weirdo. <laughs> what was the name of that pedal? Uh, oh, the Echo Nut. Um, it's. The build dock is still on the store. Um, I need to. Build dock library. I need to get. It was designed specifically for the um, for a fifteen ninety B, but you can do top mounted jacks with it in a one twenty five B if you wanted. Um, so I've been meaning to redesign it for a while, but um, here is the build dock. <clears throat> yeah, it's very similar to the King W. It just uses a. Um, a simpler way of controlling the time on each PT uh, chip. Um, anyway, if that helps. I like this design a lot. I just need to update the layout because this is one of the first ones that was on the store almost four years ago. I've been doing this a while. Um, anyway. <laughs> Thanks. Where's my Halo? Can I add that in OBS? <laughs> um, okay, I think we've got this mostly mostly done. Where's that? Are we forgetting anything? Probably. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, oh, regular LED would be a good idea. I know I didn't try to. Persnickety. Huh. 
<laughs> I don't think Nasty even uses pots. <laughs> I think they're all digital now. I have no idea. Uh, diode. Yeah, they, they are definitely there for um, noise control. And I mean, if you got leftover um, leftover op amps, that, you know, you can do it. Have them buffer your voltage reference if your circuit requires it, which if you're using a op amp, you probably do at some point. Um, yeah, it's, not, it's, a, it's a good way to, to utilize them that aren't being used. I'm. I was tempted, if we were going to stick with the LM, thirteen seven hundred or whatever. <clears throat> I was thinking of of taking out this um, op amp right here, and using those uh, Darlington transistors that are in the um, LM thirteen seven hundred. But if people can get the thirty eighty. Kind of, uh, yeah, and then I then I wouldn't have a buffer for that VREF if I changed this because then I could just make this into a, a dual instead of a quad. We're just gonna leave it the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. See you, Elon. Uh, it's uh, anytime, you know where I hang out on Instagram. <laughs> have fun at the supermarket. Brooklyn Supermarket at 11, 11 p.m., huh? Your wife must need ice cream real bad. <laughs> okay, so this is... Uh, This and then this is VC. There, I think everything, all almost everything, is livid. Okay, this is CLI. CLR. Uh, we'll just call that that. Um, all right, now we can put all the values in. And then I think I'm going to go to bed because I'm tired. Nope, oh, wrong all code. There we go. Alt two three four is the ohm symbol. I hate just putting R. It seems so like I don't know. Take the time to put in the. <laughs> um, there are no echo not uh, pedal demos on the internet. No, there probably aren't. Um, I should make one at some point because it is a cool. A cool one, if I do say so myself. Um, that probably needs to be 220. What does it need? 470 in the original. That seems like overkill. <laughs> not cats on LSD. Uh, I think I need the link for that. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds incredible. Yeah, I mean, if you've got cats on LSD, I don't think you need my <laughs> my delay demo. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. Okay, this is. Yeah. 
Oh wait, we never fixed this. I got distracted. Okay, back to values. What are you doing? Let me set them. Oh, that's hard to read. Is that 1.5? Yeah. Past two weeks straight, this is what you've been doing. Yeah? It's, uh, this is what I, I say this is my video games now. I used to play a good fair amount of, of games, and now I just mostly do this. Ben Driscoll. I know that name. Benny Driscoll from Instagram. Only connect this to the power too. Man, I fell asleep. Seven's power. <laughs> I still play Mario Kart with my kids. <laughs> and Minecraft with my kids. Benny Driz, that's you. How's it going, man? You're in Australia, right? Happy New Year. Is it next year yet for you? No, it's, you're not that far ahead. <laughs> Today's just the 30th, so okay. It's New Year's Eve for you, probably. Yeah, I'm hoping Australia will uh, open back up to mail, or the USPS will open back up for the mail. I don't know. But I haven't been able to ship anything to Australia in three months, since that's September, and then October, four months. <clears throat> this COVID stuff is a butt. A 
about to go get drunk. <laughs> um, this is the Electro Harmonics Pulsar Tremolo. Um, the newer one from the early 2000s. Um, not the transistor one. This one has uses a CA3080 OTA um, for where the tremolo signal comes in and mixes it in with the audio path. Um, I haven't tried DHL. Uh, FedEx and UPS are still delivering, but rates are ridiculous, and I would assume DHL is probably not too far behind them. Um, oh, what the heck? Go back. But hopefully that gets resolved soon. Yeah. Oh, nice. What you been working on, man? I assume it's going to be pedal related. Oh, power distortion. Cool. Oh, that reminds me. I need to make a board for the HMT. That has been on my to-do list. I think I even have the schematic drawn up and then promptly forgot about it. And that was ages ago. Oh, sweet. Flanger with a digital LFO. So is it tap tempo too? Or just a digital LFO. <laughs> yeah, there's been some people have had uh, some issues with um, the HM2 layout and I don't really know why. I haven't built that one myself, so. Oh, sweet tap tempo. Oh, the tap LFO. Sweet. Yeah, I've I've got a couple of projects in mind to do with that chip as well. I've got a couple ideas for a tap tempo harmonic trim, um, and a tap tempo um, auto wah, um, which I meant to do this past year, and kind of forgot about. But I had plenty of other things taking up my bandwidth. Your name will search mode. Uh, 
Happy New Year, Benny. Be safe tonight and uh, call your mom when you get home, all that stuff. <laughs> Happy New Year, man. <laughs> I think that's everything. Yeah, I'm betting since these are all, they were just trying to make a, a 330 or 300 nanofarad cap and just had a billion hundred in caps on hand, so they just stacked them. Yeah. We'll leave it. People can experiment with different values if they want to. I think that's everything. Modified the power section to be a little simpler. Hopefully that doesn't screw us over with noise um, since they have a regulator and extra caps, but we might get lucky and get away with it. Oh, they do have a 10 to ground. Okay, I need to add that for sure. Now I'm going to have to rename a whole bunch of crap. Oh well. Nope. Door C 14. I think that's uh, the schematic all wrapped up. I should be able to fit this in a 125B, no problem, on a double-sided layout. When we do the single-sided, it'll probably be a little bigger. Um, probably a 1590DB or something. Cause, and I might have to split some op-amps into duals instead of quads. Um, it's not an overly complicated circuit, but there's a there's enough going on. Anyway, I think that's gonna wrap it up for me tonight. 
thank you guys for watching and giving this a, a, a try with me. This was fun. It's fun to interact with some of you guys live in chat. Um, not sure how often I'm able to do this live, but I like to do it at least once a week. Um, it will vary based on schedule and stuff. And I don't know if it'll get easier to do when I'm back in my normal routine and not on a uh, holiday break. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Um, subscribe, I guess, and do all that jazz and um, turn on notifications, I guess. That's a thing, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, this was fun. We'll return to this soon, hopefully. Um, maybe over the weekend I can um, get the, the layout, one of, at least one of the layouts banged out. Um, be able to send probably the, the duel so I can get the sent to the fab house before uh, Chinese New Year kicks in. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else to say. I'm tired, so <laughs> it's getting very close to my bedtime here on the east coast of the U.S. Um, thanks for watching, you guys, and um, hang in there. And until uh, until we meet again. Talk to you later. Bye.